Hi there, welcome to my build of this 45 inch wingspan New Era 3 Revisited. In this video I'm going to be looking at fitting the servos into the fuselage and also the control linkages down to the elevator and the rudder but also taking them up to the nose gear and the throttle. Now I've already made a start on this so I need to bring you up to speed on what I've been doing and I've made the servo tray which fits into the fuselage now and I've also put some holes and, and, and worked out the lines for the, the control linkages in the, the tail of the fuselage which I'll just show you now and bring up to speed. Well before I started any of, any of this I just drew it out on, the, uh, on a piece of paper showing the relative positions of the control arms and which side I was planning to go for the rudder and the, uh, the nose gear to make sure that they were pulling in the right direction and also the elevator. It's, it's just a really brief thing to get it straight in my head uh, how I'm going to be working this. And also I just drew out uh, the um, relative positions of the servos which I'd, I'd, I'd placed in the fuselage. Having done that I've cut myself a servo tray which has got the three servos now mounted in it. Now this is 3mm ply but I wanted to thicken it up for the screws so that they weren't sticking out so I've just put another piece of 3mm ply on, on the back of that just so that the screws don't stick out. And I would suggest whenever you're doing something like this and before you put the screws in, just mark where the holes are and put a small, a very small pilot hole in and it will just stop these pieces on the back splitting a little bit. I, I would say the same with anything we're doing. If we're going to put a screw in, a pilot hole is a, a really good way to go so that it doesn't split the timber. Now, this at the moment is a really tight fit and that just drops into the fuselage like that and we can move it around wherever we want to put it. Now I'm going to put this servo tray, let me just line it up, I'm going to put this servo tray quite a long way back in the fuselage and the reason I'm doing that is because that will then give me quite a big area from here to here which I can put the battery to balance the, the plane up. I would have liked to have lifted the servo tray up so that I could actually slide the battery underneath so I had the whole kind of uh, fuselage if you like or this front section to, to move the battery for the, for the final balancing but unfortunately there's not enough room to be able to get that underneath but the CG is here but if I can get the battery I can get it right on the CG and I can get it right up in the nose so having this weight towards the tail I think is, is probably beneficial because this is where we can do all the loading if needed. And the last thing we want to do is to be adding any kind of weight to our plane whether it's in the tail or the nose much better that we can move the components around. But obviously once we've got the servos in place we can't be moving those. So they're going to go in the back here as far back as I can practically and that as I say fits in nice and tight there when I come to fit this eventually I've got some balsa which I'm going to be just gluing onto the sides like this and I will then slide it back down into position again and just CA it so that it's, uh, it's nice and secure on the plans it shows pieces of I think it's plywood or soft or pine they're talking about pine rails that this should sit on but that just seems a lot of a, a lot of weight that isn't really necessary this will hold it more than adequate and there's no flex in this at all so it doesn't need stiffening up these these little bits on the back have provide a bit of stiffness but it being three mil ply it's good quality ply so so the next thing I've done is having put this into place I've lined up the, the snakes along the back. I'm using these, these flexible, uh, flexible snakes so we secure the outer section 
and then we have an inner section, hollow inner section, and we can put a threaded rod in there, something like this with a, a thread on there, and a, a, a Z bend, and we can obviously much shorter than this, actually I've got one here that's shorter, and we can just screw that into the end and then that can either go into our uh, a, a horn on the tail or rudder or it can go into the, the arm, the servo arm, which is most likely. So I've taken the the, um, the sheath and just line that up so that it's in the correct location for the um, for the, the servo arm and mark that and marked it on the on the tail section here and just to get the location for where that needs to be for example we're talking about the the rudder on this side yeah we're talking about the rudder on this side so if I slide in the inner sheath just to get the location for that I've just held that there and, and that's given me the location that I need to be and this there's a bit of flexibility in this snake so it'll go on to any of the uh, any of the holes there and that should line up fine and I've done a similar thing with putting in the holes for the um, uh, for the elevator as well and I've put in holes in the firewall here uh, I had a little bit of a false start with the one on that side and these are quite big holes there's quite a bit of movement there and what I will do eventually when I get them in place is I'll just put a piece of balsa wood on the snake uh, when it's fitted and then when I'm in the final position I'll slide at this piece of balsa wood and just attach it in the fuselage there with a bit of CA so it's a nice tight fit. Now to get these holes done what I did is if I just get my drill I drilled <coughs> I drilled a vertical hole first and then I gradually tilted that over and for the final bit I just used this a bit like a file uh, it's a very sharp drill and it just honed that out so that this fits in at a really nice acute acute angle now before I actually fit these what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover them with some masking tape this is just decorators masking tape and I will just put a single wind around the plastic where it goes through the balsa and so that's through there I'll do a single wind of, of masking tape before it goes through and then I will epoxy this and by putting on the masking tape it really grips onto the plastic and so it will get a much better purchase onto the epoxy and the and the wood it will hold a lot more secure if I just epoxy or CA this it won't do a very I don't think it'll do a very good job and there's a potential that it will work loose because you've got shiny plastic which you're gluing to which which isn't brilliant for either epoxy or or for CA so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get these lined up finally and into place and I'm going to get this servo tray uh, glued in as well and uh, and then we'll have a quick look at the nose well, I've now got the servo plate glued in place and I've literally just epoxied these snakes, these outer snakes, into position and I'm just waiting for that to go off. You can see here the masking tape that I've put around the end of the snake so it gets much more purchase with that epoxy when it's glued into place and the same in here. You can just perhaps see up there those are glued now and there's those plates to make the hole smaller and to hold them exactly where I want them and I've used my servo tester just to check that there's, they're, they're free running. Uh, it, it occurred to me I didn't say what servos I was using. Well, the servos for the, the rudder and the nose gear and the elevator are Emac servos, the same as the ones that I'm using in the wing. And the one here at the front for the throttle 
that is also a, an Emax servo but a slightly smaller one. Now the ones for the the rudder and the elevator are 20 gram servos and they've got a torque of, of up to three and a half kilograms. The one for the throttle, smaller, that's 12 grams and that's got a torque of up to two. I'll just let you see those. And these are both metal geared servos and I think they will be absolutely great and it's, it's nice to have a little bit of weight saving on the throttle servo and that will be plenty strong enough for that Irvine uh, throttle linkage. So I'm going to put this down now and let the epoxy go off and then I'm going to get on with the cables for the front. Well I now have all of the linkages in place and I'm ready to, to move on with, with starting to finish off the fuselage. You see I've got the servo tester here connected to the elevator and that works nicely, nice and smooth uh, as is the, the other servos. You can see I've put in a, in the centre of the fuselage here, I've just put in a, a little bit of a brace just holding those, um, those outer sheaths in place. I've also trimmed the sheaths on either side of the fuselage and when I come to finish the fuselage these will obviously get trimmed a little bit more and sanded so they just fit nicely with the profile of the fuselage and, uh, and, and not sticking out proud. Now on the, the front end we've got the, the two linkages in here, we've got the top linkage for the nose gear that comes to this servo and as I said there's a a little bit of movement in this, I don't know where that shows, a little bit of movement in that to allow it to work easier with the nose gear but I've actually fastened it in there so it's it's not going anywhere, it's nice and tight and I've also put in the the tube in, the sheath for the, the throttle linkage. I've Something I've done in preparation for sheeting is I've lined the fuel tank bay as far as the bottom or what will be the top and the sides here with some foam and I've actually stuck that foam to the sides using a hot glue gun. Now I, I've, I've wanted to do that so that when I come to fitting, fitting the fuel tank it will just slide in nicely and right into place. I've even put some lumps of foam at, at the end here which will just rest on the shoulders of the tank so it doesn't go too far up and press the the silicon tubes against the the actual firewall itself and, and that's a lovely fit on the the later plans for this plane the um, on the revisited it shows a hatch cut in here that comes off on the earlier planes that hatch was absent and the only access was through the, uh, the former here and I'm going to go back to that if I can because I don't really want to cut the fuselage uh, and have a, a, a catch on the top it would just look so much sleeker if I can do away without that so this this is stuck on now nice and, and, and tight with with hot glue so it's not going anywhere and once I've slid that in place obviously with the tubes the, the silicon tubes connected and that will just go lovely into place there and then I can just fit some foam in through the hole with a little bit of a, a stick and just, just push that into place to hold it, hold it firm. And it might be that actually I decide to put the battery in here as well. If push comes to shove I can put the battery in first and then the fuel tank surrounded by a bit of foam. But that will be a bit of an ask so we'll see how that goes. I just realised that I forgot to say that I fuel proof the whole of this fuel tank bay here prior to sticking the the foam on just to protect it in case we have a, a fuel leak and, and also the back of this former and just around here and when I come to do the sheeting on here I'm also going to fuel proof the underside of this balsa just so that it's really well protected and to do that I used my 30 minute zap epoxy just thinned down a, a, a little bit with some ethanol. Anyway this is done now and I'm ready to to move on 
and start doing the sheeting on the back here, underside, and also working on this, this nose section and getting this to profile with, uh, or ready to profile with the nose ring and other bits of, of triangular stock. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe and come back and see how we get on. It's going to start to get really exciting now as we finish off the fuselage and start to shape it.